So you will need two pieces cut to nine inches wide by seven inches tall of your chipboard. So two of those, and then for your spine, you'll need one piece, seven inches tall, two inches wide. Oops. I have two pieces of 12 by 12 cardstock that I am going to be joining together with some score tape. And just get that and pull the score tape And with mine, I always, with my um, cardstock, I put these arrows just to remind me this is the grain um, of the paper for this cardstock. So I like to have it parallel to my spine. So what I'm going to do is I am going to measure off, I um, can't see this, one inch border on the bottom down here because that's going to help me align everything. And I put my spine right between where the two pieces of cardstock were put together. So I'm going to go ahead and put my one inch uh, line down here and I'll be right back. So I have my score tape on my spine. I measured off my one inch all the way down here so that's going to be a guideline for me i need lots of guidelines i have a one inch tick mark here and here that's the center of my spine so i'm going to plop it down here and have this plop up here and that just makes sure everything's squared away so once this is down this is going to be your guide for the other two panels uh, the space you need here is just going to be two of whatever chipboard you use. Doesn't matter what chipboard you use, the width of it, you just put two of them together to make a little jig and that's going to be how much space you need in between your spine and your next piece that goes right here. Now, I know a lot of people will just put the jig there and then push this up and then plop this down. For whatever reason, I always mess up. So what I'm going to try is to push this up and draw a line. That will be easier for me to line it up like this instead of pushing and then line it up with that one inch down here. And then I will plop it down. That's just easier for me. So whatever works for you, that's what I'm going to do. And I just have score tape and I'm gonna fill it in with some, um, a glue stick just to fill in this, this part here and plop that down. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. So I have the two side panels down and I've burnished them real well. Make sure you do that. And then I drew with my, I just have a one inch um, piece of cardstock that I put together. And this, I just drew one inch all the way around. So now I have my one inch all the way around. I'm just going to cut it with the scissors and be right back. So there's one inch border all the way around. Those of you that have made mini albums know how to do this. You just gotta work those edges. Get that paper trained so it will fold and hopefully not tear. I use black construction tape anyway after I'm done just to protect it from ever tearing.
most vulnerable place is always going to be this seam where you connected the two papers together. And it looks like I've already got a little tear. Jeez, that no matter what paper I use, the side is fine. The side didn't tear, but I'm going to be covering that up anyway. So uh, that always happens. Don't know why, and I try to be careful, but you can see it tore. It tore. But we'll take care of that later. Okay, so the next thing is to put score tape. I use score tape all the way around the edges here. If I had a half an inch, that's what I would use. I only have, what do I have left? Um, three eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna put three eighths of an inch around here and then three eighths of an inch over the cardstock too. Now when I do it over the spine area, let me just show you what I do. Not that you need to do this, but put it at the edge. And when I get to this area here, I use my finger, have it go down in that groove, go down in that groove, and then continue down. I don't know if it helps, but I think it does. If you've ever had that crackling noise with your spine, um, where you can hear that crackling noise, maybe some of you don't know what I'm talking about, but there's a little noise that when you open and close, it can hear a little crack. I think this helps. So that's what I do on both sides. And then just the ends here. Burnish everything real well. And now you need to miter the corners. Now with that jig where you put two pieces of your chipboard together, that's the, the amount of distance you want from the corner to where you draw your line and then you just cut. So I just go around, put my, draw my line. And then just cut. And I usually cut outside of the pencil mark. I can see, I gotta hold it up, I can't even see. I can't even see the pencil mark. It's hard to see on this black card stock. So we start folding the long sides first. So I'm going to pull the tape for the long sides. And I have my Beacons 3-in-1 glue. It's what I like to use. And I put that in between 
um, on the edge right next to the chipboard and I fill in this space, this black space that doesn't have tape. So put that next to the chipboard. And then fill in this space. And pull it over, starting in the middle. Where's my, where's my paper? Okay. Here. Go in that divot right there. And then continue going down the side. Do the same thing on the other side. And then the other thing, where is my buffer? Burnish it, but burnish it right on top of the chipwork so that glue is adhering to the, the edge of the chipboard here, both sides. And then you're going to have this little piece, the corners here, if you can see that. So what you're going to do is push that down. So you just use your fingernail, which I don't have, and you just push it down, push it down. You can see how it's just pushed down and that will give you a good miter on the corner here. And I usually will go in and make sure it's flattened before I pull the side ones over. So push it down and then in and make sure it's flattened. And try it out before you pull it over just to see what it looks like. And that's what I'm gonna do all the way around, is do the same thing on this side. Push it down and then in. So it's flattened. And then try it out, see what it looks like. And if you're happy with it, you can go ahead and pull your tape and put your glue in. Once you're happy with them, you may do need to do a little bit of trimming if the edges aren't, if they're sticking out a little bit, but um, just dry fit it before you add your glue. Oops. And let's see, Oops, I think I got too much glue there. Pull that over, make sure that's in. So those are the edges, not, not bad. We're gonna be covering this up with construction tape anyway, but that's pretty good. And then just do the same thing on the other side.
So the next thing is to fold this over without, without having it tear. Oh, I forgot to burnish the edges of it here. And I still hear some of that crackling. Let me see if I can. And that's from here. And usually I can get it to go away. It's pulling. I uh, will have to see what, once I get the hinge on, I just don't want to tear this part, but those should be adhered down pretty well. Okay. So the cover is basically done. We need to add, do our, our um, hinge system yet. So we know this is nine by seven. So our pocket pages are going to be um, six and a half inches tall by eight and a half inches wide. So we need our hinge to be six and a half inches tall. I make it not a smidgen less than six and a half inches tall. And we, uh, I'll show you how we're going to score that. So let me get mine prepared. So for the hinge, so I cut this six and a half minus one sixteenth. So just a smidgen less than six and a half because our pocket pages are going to be six and a half. Just a smidgen less than six and a half. So this is just a, a eight and a half by 11 sheet of 65 pound cardstock. So I like to leave um, wings on each side of my my um, hinge. Um, that's just me. I'm, I'm going to do a two inch wing. So we're going to start with our two inch wing. So we're going to score it at two inches. And then I like to have half an inch in between my cover and my first pocket page. So I'm going to put a half an inch. So that's going to be two and a half. Now, my hinges, I like them to be three quarters of an inch tall. When they're taller, they have more movement. They're able to move better and the pages lie flatter. So now we're going to count, what is three quarters? Six, one, two, three. Let me see, one, one, two, three. Yes, <laughs> gotta make sure. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So you count six. So that's going to be half of hinge one. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is your first hinge. So we went two, two and a half, three and a quarter, and four. So this is going to be hinge one. This is hinge one. And then we're going to have a half an inch in between our pocket pages, in between our pages, so half an inch. Now we're going to start hinge two. So that was at four and a half. Then you're going to count six. One, two, three, four, five, six five and a quarter. There's half of your, oops, five and a quarter. Half of your hinge number two. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now you're at six inches. So this is hinge two, these two guys. And you're gonna have a half an inch in between 
your hinge and your this is your forming your where your pocket page goes. So six, six and a half. And now we're gonna do our last hinge. I'm getting off, off. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a quarter. Half of your hinge, and then we're going to go to eight. So this is going to be for your third pocket page. These two guys, and then you have a half an inch. So, and then we have a two inch, um, two inch wing. So this is eight and a half. So we're going to cut this at 10 and a half. So we'll just put put it in our trimmer and just take that part off. So that's what I'm going to do. So most of you know how to fold these. I like to do my hinges first because I can visualize what I'm doing. So these are forming my first hinge. So I'm just going to fold that. And then I have that piece there and this piece here. And now I know I have, that's my hinge number one. Easy. Here's hinge number two. I'm going to fold that. Fold it here, fold it this way. And now I have hinge number two. Here's hinge number three. Just grab it right in the middle. Fold it this way and this way. And now you have your three hinges. Easy peasy. You don't need to fold these. These are just going to be guidelines when we actually put it in our um, our album. So next thing we're going to do is we are going to apply score tape to these hinges. Remember these are your hinges back in here. So we're going to join them together. So I'm going to put score tape here on all my hinges. So I like to get hinge one Burnish those two together like that, turn it over, and burnish this part down too, and then open it up, and here's where we're going to put our tape. Here's where I wish I had half inch tape, because it just makes it a lot easier. So uh, I'm going to put it at the top here. Oh, my computer just went off. There. So when you pull that score tape, that will join those two together. Before we do that, we're going to go ahead and put score tape on the next hinge. So I'm going to Burnish this one real well. So there's hinge number two. Turn it over and flatten this out. Pull it open and add my score tape. Like I said, I wish I had half an inch score tape here. I'm gonna have to get some more. This is three eighths of an inch. I'm 
Now hinge number three. Burnish the, burnish the top. Fold it over. Flatten those. Open it up and put your score tape on. Doesn't matter which one you put it on, it's just easier to for me to see this one. Though it's not that easy for me to see because it's so dark. Hopefully I'm okay. And then you just pull the score tape and join them together. And I like to do it like this. So I pull them together, bam, they're joined together. Turn it over, there's hinge two, pull them together, bam. Hinge three, turn it over, pull them together, flatten this whole thing out in the back because we're going to be putting the score tape all along the bottom here. So there's our hinge system with our three hinges for our three pocket pages. And you want to make sure, oop, I got some sticky in there for some reason. Make sure these you work them so they move pretty easy back and forward. There. So those move pretty well. So the way these are going to fit in. is this right here, where your groove is, is where you're going to be lining up these, these square marks that you made, that those half an inch square marks. That's going to be lining up there and down here. So that makes it nice and easy when you put it in. Now, before I put my hinge in, you may not want to do this, but I am going to be applying black construction tape all the way across here. So that's what I'm going to do before I put my hinge in. Now, if you watch um, Paul Ford, he, he shows you how to put this on. He does it really nice. I tried it, I can't do it, I always mess up. So what I do, it's, it works for me. I put a half an, this is one inch wide. I put a half an inch line here that I can follow and I just put it on there. Um, get lined up to the edge here, it doesn't really matter. If it overhangs, you can trim it off. Get that, and then I just follow that one inch mark all the way down. Get 
to here, go in those grooves, go in those grooves, follow your one inch mark. And cut the tape. Let's see if I can cut it with this without it tearing. And then you just roll it over, over to the other side. So I'm just rolling it over to the other side. And if you get it cro crooked, um, you can pull it back up. I got it crooked. Pull it back up. And re-adhere it. It's, it's pretty forgiving. Why did I get it crooked here? Hopefully I'll do a better job on the other end. There, so and then I'm going to do that on the other side, too. So I put this side in. So let's just get this adhered down on this side. Go in those grooves. And what I'm going to do this time is pull it over and then pull it on down on this edge. See if it works better. Yes, that works better. So I don't get the wrinkles there. Pulling that down. If you do get a few wrinkles they will come out. So now we have the two top part and now we have to do the side. Same thing, measure out half an inch. So I measured off my half an inch on this one. Going to try to get this lined up with the corner here. I forgot how I did it on my other one. If I went around, let me try to figure out. I did something, then I, I cut it so it looked nice. Let me try to figure it out. Okay, this is what I did, which is probably not the best way to do it. If you can do the way Paul Ford does it, or my creative spirit, she has um, how to do it to follow theirs. Mine is just because I, I can't do that. So I'm just going to put my half inch here. On this side, follow it down. it and then turn it over so what I do I and I just did it now I can't even remember um, so we have these little wings I cut out I go from this corner to the corner of the chipboard. Let me just cut this down a little bit. It's too, too big. 
So I'm just going to cut from here to here to the corner. And then I'm going to, now you have this piece here. So I am going to cut this little bit right here off from the straight edge here to this corner like that. So you have that little triangle taken out. You can see that. And then I'm just going to fold this over. So that's folded over. It's gone over the, the chipboard there. Now this, before you fold it over, you're just going to angle it one more time. You're going to go... It's not that hard, guys. I just make it hard. You're going to go from the edge here. Oops. You're, no, you're going to go this way. You're going to go like this from here to that corner there. So now you have that mitered edge. Don't fold it over yet because we have to do this side. So once again, we start with Cutting from here to the chipboard to that corner, then cutting from here to the edge of the chipboard, fold this over. You should have a little bit so it goes over the chipboard right there. See how it goes over the chipboard right there? So that's set. And now you go back to this side and you cut, You it's like mitering. You're going to cut from here to that edge. If I can get it. Oops, I got a little, a little piece sticking out. Can you see that little piece? I just need to trim that off. There. And then you just fold this over. So it gives you an edge like this, which is still pretty darn good because you're going to be covering this with designer paper anyway. This is just to protect your paper so it never, so your spine and corners never um, tear. I just kind of tap out the edges here. And there, it looks, it looks pretty good. So now I can put in my hinge system. So go back this way. Now with mine, so since this is, you can eyeball it or put a line. I tend to always put a line since this is basically six and a half and this is seven, I'm going to put a quarter inch line up here and a quarter inch line here so I can um, get it centered top to bottom. Side to side, it's easy because you have these half inch score marks that you're going to be aligning with this piece right here, the grooves. So let me do my half, my quarter inch up here quarter inch down here so I have my quarter of an inch line drawn down here just to guide me because I need guidance and I put score tape all across the back of my hinge so when I dry fit it I am going to be using these these lines 
are going to correspond with our half inch lines here. And then I'm going to put this at that quarter of an inch mark down here. And the way I start pulling my tape is I just start in the middle and I guess I could do that with you guys watching, but I usually get my head way down in here. Let me go ahead and pull the first two and then I think I'll be okay, but I, I usually hold this down, get my head way down in here and then just pull in the middle. So we know the middle is right is right in here. So I'm just going to pull a couple of these and then get that down. So I got the center strips adhered down. So you can see how they're aligned with the bottom. And then once those are in, then you just go in and you just pull all your score tape. This you just pull, you know it's already centered. And then you can start putting it down. If I can pull it. One thing I want to do is get in that groove first. So I'm going to pull it over and get in that groove before I adhere it any more down. don't want to tear that. Then I'll just pull the rest. And then do the same on the other side. Pull that up and just pull the score tape. Oops, I got one in. And then you want to bend this again a little carefully so you don't tear it. And there we go. So we have our album, there's our hinge system in, everything looks good. The black construction tape looks really good. And next we're going to get started with our pocket pages. So to make your pocket pages, remember we have three pocket pages, you're going to cut six pieces pieces eight and a half inches long by seven inches tall. So you're going to put this in with the seven inch on top and you're going to score it at six and a half. Make sure you, this is pushed all the way over here. I've already made a, made a mistake and didn't push it all the way. So score it at six and a half. Put this one seven inch sure it's pushed all the way, score it at six and a half. And fold in towards that bumpy side.
And I always like to make sure this is nice and straight, that I did indeed um, fold it in correctly, because if it's off a little bit, it will be off. So that, same thing. and then put your score tape on. This is 3 eighths of an inch score tape. This is obviously a half an inch right here. So put that score tape on those. Then score tape on this side, score tape on this side. And what I like to do is have the score tape at, at the bottom. I'm going to be doing this side first. And I, this is overkill, but I, you do it the way you do it. I line them up and pin them with my little clips on the other side. It's just one of my things and then I make sure this is lined up that looks good and then pull the score tape from the bottom and I check again it looks still looks good Then I remove my little clips, flip it around, still looks good, pull the score tape. That looks Perfect. And then just go to your hinge and get one of your pockets and just kind of dry fit it. It should be not too tight that you can't get it in, but it should be kind of tight. There. So there it, it fits. So we won't be putting these um, pocket pages in until we, they're decorated. But so now we have our three pocket pages and our album. So we're going to put this away and we're going to work on page one. 